Joining me today is Björn Auger Jöllo, and he is the Chief Sustainability Officer at Naftor, bringing over 30 years of maritime industry experience as a meteorologist and with a very deep expertise in marine weather and commercial shipping. Björn has been instrumental in advancing weather navigation integration, essentially combining electronic navigational charts with high standard weather and routing solutions for mariners. His company has been a major player in maritime navigation technology, especially after their strategic merger with Voyager. With operations across more than 60 countries, serving over 18,000 vessels, Björn has a front row seat to how the shipping industry is embracing digital transformation. And today we'll explore what this tech revolution means for the future of maritime operations. Hello and welcome Björn, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much, and it's great to be with you. Björn, with over 18,000 vessels using NAFTA systems, you have unprecedented visibility into global maritime operations. What trends are you seeing in how the industry approaches digitalization? Well, first, in general, as you probably know, uh, the maritime industry is a slower mover than most other industries. Uh, but we see increasingly that the vessel owner and charter has uh, common goals uh, to reduce cost and meet the regulation. And uh, basically they have to do that and work together. And in that, in that phase now, we see our increasing interest in all kinds of, of digitalization. And secondly, uh, when they start, typically starting point will be moving from paper to, to navigation and digital charts and, and publication. Uh, for our customer, most of those has done that move, but of course the rest one will, will come. And when they have that digital platform in place, which that will be based on our pay as you sale service, and then the nav station, and then nav station can add additional layer, in fact, 18 information layers as far as, far as we have now. And everything is, kind of concentrated into the hashes plan. And that is the, the next step that they start the digital voyage with now to, to, to increase the overall efficiency and in addition to the safety that we have worked so much before. Uh, and together, uh, those two elements will, will save time and, and reduce costs. You're involved in fascinating AI projects like the Green AI for Sustainable Shipping, how is Naftor using artificial intelligence to improve and simplify maritime operations? And what innovations are you most excited about? Yeah, utilizing AI is now a, a main trend in all industries. And, and you can't read any interviews without the, uh, someone claiming to, to use AI. Uh, however, uh, again, maritime is in general are a bit behind. Uh, however, in Naftor, we have strong focus on AI to improve uh, and simplify existing and, and new services. And I can mention two examples on this. So the first one is a three-year project that we are running uh, named Green AI for Sustainable Shipping, partly founded by the Norwegian Research Council's Green Platform, and it's been running for, for 18 months now. Now, after is here the project owner, but we have with us strong partners on AI, and we have also uh, major ship owners that are giving us access to long time series of data. And NAFTA itself has also a long time series. We started to collect uh, data uh, at the first instance we could uh, when we have brought our digital service on board. So we have we know where vessel has been, we know what weather they have have sailed through, and and so on. So the, we are making kind of two main innovation in this, this project using AI. First of all, uh, we are making or developing a digital twin of the main engine. So it means that we are based on time, 10 years of time series uh, of vessel data, including our own internal data. And uh, additionally, we have also put on board uh, motion response units to have the details of the impact of each single waves uh, and using this uh, we have made then this digital twin uh, and this digital twin will then continuously update the the ship specific uh, vessel metrics so the vessel metrics is kind of giving you the fuel consumption 
an increase of fuel consumption when the vessel is passing through bad weather. And that is uh, main information to keep that uh, updated. And especially then when they are sailing into harsh weather, stormy weather, and it will take into account uh, the, the basic met ocean data like wind, like uh, waves, uh, swell, two components of swell, uh, current, uh, and, and location of, of major uh, lows and, and so on. So that Diggle's main uh, twin is, is the starting point. Second, and in parallel, we have also uh, developed an AI-based genetic algorithm uh, to make a more detailed and sophisticated weather routing optimization service. So this Diggle twin is feeding into the Vero service. So we have the cost uh, for a more detailed cost when the weather is sailing uh, along its route. And uh, this has uh, already proven quite successful and is now undergoing further refinement. And we are aiming for an operational AI-based uh, weather routing service uh, in uh, 2026. And in addition to the traditional vessels, when we have this ship matrix, we will also be able to do uh, services for wind-assisted uh, uh, propulsion. And uh, that is also something that we see is coming heavily now. Uh, so it, all in all, uh, these two services together will be able to, to make a better decision. So it's always this perfect balance between going the great circle, which is the shortest way and should be chosen normally, and the, 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 um, the cost of avoiding bad weather. How far should you go to avoid bad weather? And that is, that is the perfect balance we are hunting with the uh, with new weather routing service that we are developing. Mm. A oh. second example uh, is another project that we are running, uh, Dynaport, which is also focusing on saving a fuel, but in a different way. They are, we are in that project, it's owned by Sintef and NAFTA is a partner, but we are focusing on building uh, uh, the first digital ship to shore port call. And then utilizing uh, the IMO reference model, uh, which is a standard ISO 28005. And the first ever operational port call has been done a month ago between NAVTO and our supported vessel named NCL Vestland and the port of Rotterdam. In addition to reducing workload and enhance the data quality, or AI is in this case used to predict congestions in port area. So the, the the port call, the automated port call, will help us to do a better just-in-time arrival and then a, enabling fuel savings by replacing the, the, the well-known hurry up and wait uh, that is practiced, that is commonly uh, used today uh, in the industry. So that is at least some of what we are doing now and, and probably the main part when it's related to AI. Yeah, congratulations on this first digital report call. That sounds fascinating. I would love to visit your offices to see some of the digital twins uh, live in action, analyzing some data. But okay, I have to... Yeah, we have a demo lab, so you are welcome anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, now we have covered already some customer success stories, but I wanted to ask you my other question now. Uh, your approach focuses on building one integrated ecosystem rather than multiple point solutions. How does this comprehensive approach deliver greater value and, and can you share another customer success story that demonstrates this? Yeah, NAFTA has over the last decade now, uh, since we were established in 2011, uh, uh, proven that, uh, that our ship shore ecosystem e-navigation service is uh, is valued uh, and this ecosystem is now the platform uh, it has proven for e-navigation with the pay as you sail as you know but we are now extending uh, other services like the digital logbooks like performance services like the new weather routing i just talked about and other services to come and build those into this one ecosystem utilizing then uh, or enabling to utilize uh, the synergies between all these systems. This will then allow for crew to enter data based on pre-filled values. We may have sensor data coming in, so they, they will have our kind of pre-filled values and then do the quality control themselves. 
and enter the same data only once. And we have heard, and probably everyone uh, on board know, that going and enter the same value in different system is not the best uh, time or <laughs> they, they are using. So, and thereby, we increase the safety by reducing the workload uh, on the bridge, as we have done with, with our NAV station and, and passage planning as well. So additionally, the NAV fleet emission simulator for uh, CII compliance represents our proactive approach here, allowing our customer to make what-if scenarios. So that will uh, also be a potential feed for AI-based services uh, as we go. But still, in the current version, uh, you are having a decision support tool here uh, to, to try to avoid uh, and reduce your fuel consumptions. Mm -hmm. Customer stories, yes. Uh, uh, there has been many happy cruise stories over the time. I'm, I'm very happy to, to tell. And especially when we introduced the pay-as-you-sale, uh, they basically didn't believe it in the beginning that they can just start sailing. They didn't have to update the chart. They didn't have to get license to the chart. They can just sail. And they called us and say, we have misunderstood. Could, could you please explain this? Yes, just start sailing. So that that was then introduced. And with the, with the digital chart, we had the, the nav station on board, our planning station. And we started to introduce all these layers of information. And uh, myself, in fact, was uh, working on the passage planning. But, uh, and, and that became also, of course, very much uh, reducing the, the, the load on board and, and becoming more efficient and you meet the port call and everything. Uh, but the one, if, if I should pick one, it, it's a quite simple one from the early days when we introduced the pace. Uh, I got uh, um, email from a navigator on board one of the main tanker owner in Bergen. And it was simply him staying in front of a pile of chart with a meter stick, showing that it was close to one meter of paper chart. I think he said he had uh, 1,100. And it just said, thank you. That is probably the best statement ever, uh, because everyone who has corrected paper chart know that it's pain in the ass. And if you have several hundred or maybe thousand on board, yeah, you can imagine. So that is one uh, fine uh, success story, at least. That, that's amazing. I can, I can imagine this uh, navigator in front of this pile of charts and, and then really feeling the thank you for for. His, for finding a solution for this for this problem, um, you have already touched on the issue of slow adoption. But I would like to dig a little bit deeper in my last question here. The maritime industry has been traditionally slow to adopt new technologies. What strategies have been most effective in helping operators overcome a resistance to digital transformation? And where do you see this heading? Yeah, NAVTO was, of course, also a newcomer in the maritime chart industry in, in 2011. But uh, as, as you may know, we were, we, we were all coming from CMAP. We were experienced people. We had been in the industry from 1993 for Toswan as the, the CEO. And I've been working there for, for, for many, many decades as well. So even if we had access to many ship owners' door, we had to prove that our solution was only not only meeting the regulation, but also saving cost. And the last one is is important one. If you can prove that you have a good service and you can prove that you're saving cost, then you have uh, have a good good story. And what we saw quite early is that if we could have one vessel testing our service on on the ship owner's office. Uh, they would uh, uh, appreciate the pay as you sail uh, very much, uh, and uh, and they would like to 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 show and they understood uh, that they were then having updated uh, information that they if there were port state coming on board they would be in compliance and so on. So later and and as I said myself sat down with ship owner in Bergen and started the process to automate the passage plan as far as possible. So in general, NAFTA has been digitalizing and simplifying solutions, reducing the workload and helping reducing the cost and stay in compliance. So those three, out of those three, reducing cost is probably the heaviest one, but the two other one is, is supporting it very much then. So when we now are now moving into 
new uh, digital services with, with logbooks and performance, uh, digital port call reporting, weather routing. We will do the same as we always have done. We will build a trustworthy solution integrating into our ecosystem. Or as we say, uh, smart shipping made easy. That is what we are looking for all the time. Excellent. Thank you so much for these insights, Björn. It's uh, fascinating to see how technology is reshaping the maritime world. Appreciate you very much for taking the time. Thank you very much. It was nice to speak with you. And, uh, and uh, we are always uh, open to talk about our innovation and, and our view on, on uh, the industry. And uh, there is, uh, there is, we are slow, but uh, the maritime industry will, uh, will be digitalized very soon, I'm quite sure. Oh, 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 oh,